history would indicate, Chael, that this is going to be his last chance at UFC gold if, in fact, he loses. How about this, Chael? Let's just run down the resume real quick. This is his 18th year as a pro, 18 years. As we've talked about in the past, you don't usually find this kind of success, notoriety, popularity in your 17th, 18th year. Masvidal has done this. How about this, Chael? This is his 50th pro fight. In his 50th pro fight, he's getting a chance to become a UFC champion for the very first time. How about this, Chael? This is his 20th UFC fight. If he wins the title, if Masvidal wins the title on Saturday, it will be the second most amount of UFC fights by a fighter to finally taste gold for the first time. The first, Michael Bisping, back in 2016, took him 26 fights to make it to UFC gold. And so all signs would indicate that, you know, this is it for the guy. I mean, this, this type of success doesn't happen this late in one's career. And oh, by the way, Kamaru Usman isn't showing any signs of slowing down. So you could say, all right, he loses this fight, but at some point, someone else is going to get that gold, and then he can maybe get another crack at the title. But as we know, Usman has won 13 fights in the UFC, 13-0, second longest streak to start a career in UFC history, successful streak, winning streak behind the great Anderson Silva, who started 16-0. So I would think that there's a ton of pressure on Masvidal's shoulders. He has to win this fight, because if he doesn't, that may be it for his dream of becoming UFC champion. Objection, Your Honor. Masvidal has gold. It's called the BMF belt. Am I the only one? Hello. It was at the Mecca, Madison Square Garden. The Rock was there. Maybe you remember this. Why does he get the only championship in combat history that doesn't have a lineage and he's not forced to defend it? I think both belts are on the line myself. I think that if Usman wins, Usman ought to get another one for his shoulder. I really believe that. I don't understand how we had a championship match and then we quickly say that the history books are going to reflect that he's for champion forever even if he gets beat. There has to be a lineage into it and I will concede to you this. Yes, I very much like the way that this story is being told as it has to do with the undisputed championship. This is not a cash grab and make no mistake. We've done cash grabs before. In fairness, that's what their first fight was. That's what the six days notice was. That was about getting a paycheck. Guys, this is all chips are in. Masvidal is the biggest star in the sport and yes, you can submit your argument for Conor McGregor. Usman is the greatest fighter the welterweights have ever seen, and yes, you can submit your argument for George St. Pierre, but my point is the same, that they both have something the other one wants. Usman has never got his due. He's never got his shine. As a matter of fact, when they fought the first time, even though Usman won all five rounds, according to the judges at ringside, Masvidal left with all the credit. Masvidal got the pat on the back. Masvidal likely got the bigger paycheck, and he got the story told about him that he took a fight on six days' notice. Usman did the same thing. Usman hasn't got the credit. Masvidal wants the belt. Usman wants the glory. All chips are in. And I love that this is about competitiveness, not about the money. I got to say, that was really impressive, supremely impressive to, to, to watch and listen to someone whiff three times like that in one answer. Really amazing stuff. Number one, if you want to go with lineage, Kamar Usman is the BMF champion because he beat Jorge Masvidal back in July, so the title would have changed hands there. Uh, Jorge Masvidal is the biggest star in the sport. What is going on? 420 was yesterday, Chael. What is going on? Oh, by the way, Kamaru Usman, greatest welterweight of all time. I know you didn't just say that. I know you didn't just disrespect Matt Hughes, let alone George St. Pierre. Chael, take it down a notch. You're completely off here. But I will say this. I will say this. You know what works in Masvidal's favor? The fact that every other contender at 170 is someone that he has beef with, right? If Covington ends up fighting Usman and Masvidal loses and then he wins, Covington versus Masvidal is an easy fight to make. It's a massive fight to make. If Edwards ends up beating Diaz and then he beats Usman, Edwards versus Masvidal is a big time fight to make. If Diaz beats Edwards and then he fights Usman and he somehow wins, Diaz versus Masvidal too is a massive fight. So he's in a good spot. I will just say this. The reason I feel like this might be it for him is Usman has shown no signs of slowing down. He is getting better. We saw the best Kamara Usman just less than two months ago in, in, in Las Vegas, right? When he beat Gilbert Burns. And so if he holds that belt to six, seven, eight, nine, Defenses. I don't know if Masvidal is around. I don't know if he wants to be around and wait that long. And by the way, Masvidal doesn't necessarily need a belt to be famous, to be you know a big earner as far as money is concerned. But he has said time and again he wants that belt. He feels like it's validation. And so I would suggest to him, win this fight if you want to realize that dream. And by the way, you agree with me, right? Like that was an impressive 0 for 3 on your part. 
Yes, most definitely. But I must tell you this. Masvidal is the biggest star in the sport when Conor McGregor yeah. isn't present. And I do think that Usman is the best welterweight in the world when you're not discussing George St. Pierre. As far as the lineage and the BMF belt, look, I'm all for it. But let's talk about Masvidal real fast, Errol, because this is only fair. You're talking about could he ever get the shot again. If Usman shuts the book on him 2-0, and I agree with you. It won't be against Usman. But let's not forget, Masvidal did not come up the hard way and earn this opportunity. He sat out. He took his ball and went home, and he was given the good grace that the champ on ESPN grabbed a microphone and said his name. And I only bring that to you because if we're talking about Masvidal falling and we haven't seen anything in the last 12 months that says he wants to climb back up and come back through the ranks, yes, I must concede this is his last crack at Undisputed Glory. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.